In this tutorial, we'll learn about components and how to work with them. For this, we'll build the benefits section together. We'll first add a container and make its width 100%. We'll add overall padding to it as well as some margins. Next, we'll add the heading text. From the text styles in the inspector, we'll choose the already defined headline too. We'll add another 100% width container, that will be the wrapper of our four cards. Now, let's make the card. We'll add another container. The left side of our card is an image with a gray background, while the right side is a heading and a text. We'll set the parent's flex direction to row and center it. Then add a container for our left side and add the right style to it. Inside, we'll add an image element, making it a bit smaller in size and we'll center it horizontally and vertically. We already uploaded our assets, so we'll select the right one from our assets manager. On the right side, we'll add another container. Inside, we'll add a heading with a headline 3 text style and a text element. After that, we remove the width of the parent container. Now here comes the interesting part. Looking over the section that we need to build, we can see that these cards are very similar. They have the same style and elemental structure, it's just the elements content that is different. Let's say that in the future, we'll want to change all of our colors. We would then have to manually update every card. So instead of copy pasting the container that we've just built, we'll use one of Teleport's main features, the component. Components are really just grouped up elements that you can use again and again, in different instances, sort of like symbols in designer tools. Creating a component is very easy. We select the card container, right click on it and select make component. We instantly see that the selection color is now purple, to be easily distinguished from non-component elements. In the tree view, the ones container is now a component. Take note that we cannot select children elements anymore. To gain access to the children elements, we have to go to the files tab on the left side of the canvas. Let's rename it to feature card. Double clicking on the component will also take us to the component editor. From here, we'll be able to make any changes to the components elements. On the top right side of the canvas, we have the props panel. It contains all the automatically generated props of our newly created component, based on its existing child elements. Selecting a prop from the list will highlight the element it is attached to. We can edit the props name and default value for each of them. We'll update the text default value to a longer one, and the heading as well. We'll also add some style on the component, to make it look really good. But why do we need these props I hear you ask? Going back to our main page, we'll duplicate the existing component since we need four different instances. We'll make the parent container row, spaced between and wrap. We need the text content and the images to be different for each instance so, to modify them, we'll simply have to change the props values. If we select the second instance of our component, we can see on the right side of the canvas, that instead of the inspector we now have the component props panel. It is populated with the default props values. 
Changing the title value, we see that it updates the heading for the selected instance. We'll do the same for the text, and images of all the other instances as well. Going back to the main component editor, let's add a margin between the heading title and text. In the home page, we can see that all existing instances have been updated. Whenever you feel that you need to better customize a component instance, and props are not exactly what you need, you can always detach it from the main component using Detach Instance, from the context menu. That's it for the component, in the next video, we'll see how to make the design responsive.